We're going to shout praises unto y'all. Lift our hands. Shout hallelujah. For the excellence of his might. His power of deliverance unto be at Yisrael. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We do greet you all that have joined us via the live broadcast. Whatever format you are listening to us in via the live audio or the live stream that is visual, we greet you all in Yorkshire Hamashiach mighty name. For he is the redemption and the redeeming power of the excellence of the Torah of Yah expressed unto Yisrael. And as we come to the excellence of that wisdom and understanding, then we have the ability of the certainty of the sea, the zero of Abraham, that we shall be a berechiah, a blessing to every nation whereby Yah has scattered forth the zero of Yisrael. And until we come to that dubious duty that is commanded, then we will be a shiftless people, not understanding the destiny of Yah, our destination. Our wisdom is somewhat suspect because it is not the power of the operation of the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach that brings forth the beauty of revelation, the excellence of Yah's power, the might of Torah, the strength, the beauty. Every substance of Torah is revealed through Yahshua HaMashiach. So I am I'm excited today about the Shabbat, the Shabbaton that Yah has granted unto us as a nation, His people. And I certainly do look forward to the Shabbat on this past week of labor. I have looked forward to the Shabbaton where I can rest in the comfort, the assurance of the Torah of Yam that there is nothing of impediment to impede, to subvert, to cause my attention to be drawn into other directions that are unfruitful. And so by the master's mastery of his power and by the mastery of his ability to create and procreate, he said, I give you all a Shabbaton, not just rest, just rest. You really don't need no preaching when you come to the power of the fullness of the Ruach HaChodash. When that expression of the mind of Yahshua is surely in Yisrael, you will need no man to teach you. We will come and it shall be a time of not reveling like they did in Miami, but a time of great rejoicing and singing and dancing in the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Because all that one needs it is already supplied in the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach it is one thing that the enemy has done with his mastery he has somewhat eradicated the very essence and the power of Yahshua's testimony from the minds of Yisrael we have been induced by the ways of this vile whore I will not stop talking the way I talk she's not even a dirty slut the slut will give you some titty milk this is a ruthless whore this is a ruthless whore she's vile she's insensitive She's a snare to the minds of the masses. She draws them by her alluring power. Look at me. The dainties of my clothing and my riches. The nations of the people are drawn unto that. 
And yet, Yah, raise your sure in the excellence of his fragrance and his beauty. And yet, we as a nation, when we look upon him, we literally have disdain. He was hated by all men. His body was more marred than any man. He had no comeliness, but he had the tifra of Yah, that no man, when they peered upon him, that they would delight in that. That doesn't imply that he was some kind of a grotesque figure of a man. It doesn't signify that at all. It was just nothing about him whereby the process of our thinking has been arranged, nurtured, and fed upon that this would be the image of the mighty one of Yisrael. And by us, through the tentacles of this vile whore, we have negated to walk in the power of that truth. And so Yoshua has become a figure that has no relevance in the lives of Yisrael because if he did, then we would obey him. We would obey what he commanded us because he is the Sava, he is the commanding power of Yah. He is the authority, he is the might, he is the strength of the Abba. I certainly do not feel like preaching. The only reason I didn't have Zachin Yarabia is because. Uh, I know that their labor has been as intense as mine. And so I will tend to maneuver through the process today and to lay a vital foundation that is vitally important. But I do want to greet all you that are listening, our friends, our supporters, our Zakind, uh, they are in McKinney, Texas, they're in the Dallas area. And also our precious Ach Yaqub, they're in uh, Tampa, Florida. I am sorry, they're in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Also the Hart family, their kind, their tremendous, generous gifts of help and support. Our Ach there with all of them, our Ach Tesner and all of the family, we greet you all in the precious name of Yoshua Hamashir, our Ima. Miriam Oprah there in the Maryland shore area of Maryland and also our precious Ach and Charles Davis there with the gathering there in Los Angeles, California. We greet you all. Sure, I shall come fast and furious today because we must understand the mandate of Almighty Yah. So we greet you all, all of our friends, wherever you are. We greet our Ach Mikhaya and Mikhaela, our friend Tisafaniah. It is one thing that he always, every Shabbat, he will write me a note to inspire, to encourage, to press on. He will say, don't labor too much on Shemach Yisraya, because we need you on the Shabbat. Of course, he thinks that I should stand here three, four, five hours. And of course, I don't have that ability to do that. There are others that may, but I'm certainly one that is not of that class. As a Shaul, as a Khfa, Men Lach Men Lach I'm not of that class. Men Lach Moshe, that he stood before the people day and night and he judged the situations that were among them and they arose out of his lineage of his uh, marriage uh, one by the name of Yethro uh, who says unto him man uh, Yah has given you the inspiration and the power but there is too much and there is so much you can do and you cannot so it is vital to have the assistance of those that truly love Yah I don't like weak men I say that to this degree I don't like being around men that are not sincere and do not have the self-motivation of the Torah that it inspires them. 
that there is a great willingness, uh, even though regardless of the torrential onslaught of the enemy of hell, uh, but they have strength. I'm not talking about some damn physical strength. Because one can lift 50, 60, 100 pounds, that means nothing at all. I'm talking about men that have the perseverance, the character of strength, the willingness, the tenacity, that they will assault against the, the very uh, demons of hell. I like men like that. I don't like these self-imposed boys that think that they are men. The little boys, they have no spiritual maturity, have nothing. We can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Maisho said to me that the blueberries are coming. I said, then pick them. Get the hold and you'll pick the blueberries. So why tell me? Just pick them this is the generation that certainly doesn't care for Yah and so assaulting upon them he brings his assault he is a man of war Yah is a man of war he loves to fight and if we are sons of Yisrael we love the Milchaya the Milchaya we love to fight I'm set for defense of truth. And that's what we need. Not the Naha boys. We need men. We need Ghadul, great men. You will know a great man because he understands, first of all, Yaz Mishachem, his judgments. A great man or a gadol man, he understands judgment. And his delight is in the Torah of Omar Yah. He is not superficial. He is not a dubious character. But he is a man that loves judgment. And he judges too. And he's not fearful because he knows he's a spiritual man. These weak, cowardice, they're cowardless. They're not even under the belly of a snake. And listen, I don't take one word back either. You offend me, I intend to offend you. Hallelujah. They're weak boys. This is not a man. For man's strength is the power of the testimony. Yeshua HaMashiach is the head of every man. And a man has that testimony of power that he is more than equipped for the battles against the Shadim, the demons of darkness. He's more than equipped. He has that authority. Only in that testimony. Well, I can preach in that direction today, but uh, I must continue on the path that we have laid a foundational stone. And in the process today, I will identify or give great credence unto that identity of that stone. I want to begin again to clarify meanings and definitions according to its original intent. You must understand that vernacular words or linguistics, it has been transfused. It has gone through all kinds of evolution. For by one word we say, man, that is bad to the bone. Well, uh, in the true analysis of that, then it is worthless. But yet, in one degree, what we will call slang jargon, it carries the implication that it is shown enough right. 
It is shown of right. It is bad to the bone. Well, that may not be the phraseology in this, uh, in the gendra of today's, uh, 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 what we will call slang terminology. But certainly in my days, uh, it carried uh, a tremendous uh, expression, uh, a superlative of great amplification. And so we must get back to the original intent of what Yah means. And the only way we can do that, we must pray. We must offer up the pala, the utterance of sincerity. Not this damn superficial, damn hodgepodge of mess that we offer unto Yah. That is an indictment upon Kor Yisraya because we know that the effectual fervent. When something is fervent, there is a burning passion, isn't it? A fervent passion is one that is burning, it is energized. We know that we are praying in the power of Yah or offering the ablation. When the fervent prayer of the Sadiq, when it avail, availeth, it brings forth substance much. When it brings forth Rabbah, much, a lot, plenty, we will know that we are praying in the Ru'ach of Yah. Not speaking some damn jittery stuff you have learned. But we pray with understanding. When Jao prayed in the Ru'ach of Yah, he may have prayed in a form of the Aramaic, in a dialect of the Hebraic. Not this mess you have learned from the whole house. Like Creflo dollars and all these damn deceivers. It is not of Yah. And so we must pray that Yah will raise up those strong and great men. And then when he does, we acknowledge them. We identify them. And you will know them at the fire that utters out of their mouths. You will know them. They will not be superficial. That's what we need, Yisrael. We may not want to hear this. But we're in one of the most challenging times of our lives. You tell me you want popsicles to run the race? No, you need some neck bones. Beef neck bones. You need some bean fried rice. Some kidney beans. You need something that's going to stick to the rib. That's what we need. Sir. We don't need this instant drugstore, CVS, formula. Nothing but death. In the same way that we that are sincere, we desire the sincere milk of his imat. Not this formula that man has created to kill you. And so we must get back to the origin of imat. What is truth? How do we understand the very perilous times that shall avail themselves upon Yisraya. How will we know that? How can we as a nation, these individuals, that all of our learnings and learning has or have come, it has come by men that were not students of Torah. They did not love the truth. Sha'u others under the Sinaikiya because they received not this profound ahava, the love of the Torah, then you shall send them strong delusions that they all might believe a sheikh, a lie of deception, and the reason why that they all might be damned. That he may damn them all. And how can a man express this? Revelation of Yon Yoshua, 
when he despises the Torah of Yah. And so what they do, they paint pictures of a fantasy built upon false paradigms. That's why the Lahey boys are, are multi-millionaires uh, by selling their damn lies of theses uh, called the rapture. Or this thing we know as uh, the time of Yaakov uh, Zerah, great afflictions uh, and troubles. And so the skinning devils and the grinning dogs of hell, uh, they have... Uh, Fill the minds of the masses with, with wicked deception of lies. And so you don't know the truth of the order and the process as to how things will go. So I'm going to make it plain. Are you a prophet? No, I've never said I was a prophet. I am a simple messenger. I am so ignorant that I can't even define words. I must define them from their original intent and the content of originality. Now that's how ignorant I am. You may be wise and smart. I am not. I need him. And I need him to open up to Gala, to uncover this false deception that my eyes have been allured by. And I need to walk in the power or the eye in my spiritual and mental perception of Yah's commands, his instructions that they are revealed. And when they are re revealed, they become a reality of truth in my life. I must do that, Yisrael. It has to be that way. Hallelujah. And the only way I can endeavor to operate in that kind of a ru'ah, I must constantly reprove myself and show me and show us as a nation and how small our abilities are they're not worth a damn you can take all of our ability collectively together and put them in a massive uh, cold drum it doesn't add up to a damn thing the measure of it is worthless it will purchase nothing and it certainly will not purchase us a seat before the throne of Almighty Yah. I want to read this from Giliana Revelation. Uh, God, we greet you all that have joined us in the later process of this gathering here at Yahweh's congregation here in Teshua community. We greet you all. Yoshua Smarty name. We are going to continue this teaching, this preaching of uh, how do we understand the beginnings or the mark of the beast and man whereby no man can buy or sell unless they have the mark the number we must understand that in these charlatans of liars in the church of god in christ the church of god the damn repugnant apostate lies of the apostate Jesus Christ damned the twisted doctrines. Uh, the deceivers and liars have been raised up from the gates of hell. Uh, the only way a man can be raised up to the pinnacle of Yah, his mind must be shapen as Yah said uh, of Abraham, I know, I yalda, that he will teach his whole house uh, the judgments of Yah. He will bring them up in the manifesto of the Torah. And they will know. And so we have been trained by enemies of Yah. We have been trained by the enemies of Yah. You know that you have been trained by the enemies of Yah because when we hear the truth, we become hostile. We become angry. It upsets us. We don't like it. He is talking to me. Well, I'm glad that he is talking to me. I'm glad that he signifies me by identifying me by my actions and my deeds. And the messenger of Yah speaks to me directly. 
that Yah cares enough about me that he will send a word directly, specifically for me. I'm glad about that. I don't want to be lost in the cold drum of this uh, hog posh of a mess. I want him to speak to me directly. Speak to my eels, my sins, my vile ways, my initiatives uh, that are not uh, based upon principles of the Torah. But based upon that wisdom. So speak to me. So if he cuts me, not only cut me, as Hefa said, not only my feet, but wash me all over. Wash my mouth, my head, as Granny would say, my ears and all. Wash my ears, wash my, wash my hearing, my ability. Let the filth flow. Hallelujah. Again here in Revelation, Giliana. Chapter 13 and verse 17. It speaks of this climactic time period. Whereby we shall see the mind of man deluded with all kinds of delusion. Because they receive not the love of the Torah. And because of those strong delusions that are raised up by Yah. And because of those what we call miracles. Uh, if it's in any expression I will use the Greek terminology. It is in that the Simeon. Simeon. These are not the Mufeth of Yah. They're not the miracle of Yah. And because of the mayhem and the reason that all mayhem is coming, uh, because man loves money more than he loves Yah, he has held back from the righteous labor of those uh, that have labored in his vineyard, uh, and it's to his own destruction and death. That's why Hashatan said unto Yahshua, all of this is mine. All the riches, the power of the kingdom. I set up kings and rulers and authorities and governments. I baffle the minds of the people because it has been granted. He uses the word no thorn. It has been bestowed by a higher power. And you are the strength of that power. But if you want this kingdom blessing on this earth, then bow down and worship me. We can see from the concept of the living power of the Torah. It was something of worship. When he brought Yisra'ya out of Misra'im. What was the first thing they began to do? They built the altar. They raised up their damned dog of a god. Every god is a damned dog. And then they began to strip themselves to show their nakedness and wallow in the filth of their damnable wickedness. Isn't that the very order of these whole houses the day? Men sleeping with men, women with women. And the damn fat greedy bastards are sleeping with everything that looks like a female. And nobody says anything. So the whole concept is about one thing. It is about worship. It is about the shekha. It is about the power to exude the very presence of Yah. And the cause is through up the living power of Yah to flow down upon Yisrael. That's what it's about. Because that was the first challenge that the word, when it was tried, Bahashatan fall down acknowledge me and so he must emulate or simulate yah because i want to show you the first sign that yah introduces to man when he makes himself known there's a sign and that's the truth hallelujah it says here in the book of Gilgana, and listen before i proceed there is nowhere in this book and the writings of Gilyana. It is the uncovering or gala. It is the eyes, the eye end, the spiritual, not just the ozen, the physical eye, 
but it is the uncovering of the mental and spiritual perceptions of Almighty Yah. For an example, you can read the word and although in your vernacular or in your learned skill or abilities, you don't understand the definity of that, but it is the power of that uncovering that makes it known. It becomes a revelation. It becomes alive. You become excited. You, begin, you get happy. And these damn dirty beasts out of hell, they're not doing that. It's amazing that people don't like me. I must inject this. The basketball team Miami won what they call the title. It's amazing that I was reading, listening this morning, and these things don't excite me, how that LeBron James, his approval or his mockability, there is a threshold of a certain... Uh, excellence of percentage it was at 34 percent he had a threshold higher than Peyton Manning and all of the what they call the uh, the perceived athletic athletes and all of a sudden it has plummeted down to the depths or the gates of uh, non uh, non returning and all of a sudden they loved him today and then they hate him tomorrow you see this damn thing they call love it's filthy as hell. You cannot develop love. That's why you ima you avat. You must teach your babies the Torah. You must teach them how to love Yah. You let the damn television. You let the damn MySpace. You let the damn YouTube. You let the damn whatever the other one is. Uh, you let that teach them. Facebook. You're not teaching them a damn thing and that's to you, you sorry, lazy, pappy, papa. Are you damn unclean, mammy, mama? I don't give a damn if you don't like me. That's the difference between a warrior and a soldier. For the cause of Yah in your Yeshua, it's greater than my needs. I don't need nothing. We have more food than I can eat. I have more clothing than I can wear. I have a place to lay my head and sleep. I have fans going in the house to keep me cool. I don't need anything. Because all that is in this world is woes and agony. I don't give a damn if you got $10 million, they have agonies and woes, uh, trials and sufferings, uh, and they're going through much. I don't want much. Because the little I have, the little I have to go through. We have been hoodwinked. We have been deceived. We don't want to deal with that. I'm simply glad that I have not been bewitched. Where I cannot obey when once one is bewitched. That's your damn Jesus thumping brothers and sisters and mama and your pappy. When they have been so bewitched that the name of Yah is a destructor. And they hate at their damn dogs. I don't give a damn if they're nine or 99 or 109. I will, my friend. I don't give a damn who it is. I don't give a damn who it is. When they despise the revelation of that truth and they hold on to the damn lies of a damn faggot, effeminate Jesus Christ, go to hell, man. When one hears Yah's truth, they cannot harden their hearts. They may not understand, but don't fight against it. It's one thing, my, uh, one thing I've never done, fought against things that were beyond my ability to understand. I didn't fight. I didn't mess with it. 
I did not try to attack it. I simply left it alone. You can never say in all of my years of preaching and my ignorance before we began to keep the Shabbat, I would denounce that. You can't say that. I didn't mess with it. Yet I recall the day that he sat me there in the office. I had no computer there. Had my strong concordance. And I began that bed of sheets. Over 20 some years ago, I began to search. And when I began to search, I realized that how could I say that I love Yah and the commandments and all the stipulations of them are as true today as they were then. And I watch how even Yah used the most wickedest of individuals to just simply say, I keep the Shabbat. Now you all don't have to, but I will. And I recall that Shabbat service that this Achot says to me, of all the people, she says to me, when are we going to begin to keep the Shabbat? I said, next Shabbat. Hallelujah. You cannot say you love Yah without keeping the first four mitzvah. The first four mitzvah. Can we put, can we have a damn God before Yah? Can we create images before Yah and say they're gods? Uh, can we do that? Can we do that, Yisra'ya? Can we take his name in sharp and vain? And can we forget the Shabbat? Would he command us to remember that? We can do that. And these are purporters of lies. The greedy dogs like T.D. Jakes. The effeminate, faggot, aura of the dog bishop Eddie Long, they're dogs. Yah calls the shepherds dogs, and I will call them damn dogs. It's in the book, as Bishop Bakes would say. Let me get to the point. All right. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Revelation, Gilgana 13, 17. In the crisis of this time, this aura, I want you to understand this. Let me read this first and I will proceed. It said, and that no man, no ish, he, he, no man might buy. And Yah uses the words, uh, Hana. I want to define that again. And its origin, its original, in its power that was expressed from the loins of Yah. No man will be able to buy. It is Ha. Chana. It is a word that originates, it is the origination of Yah. And the word Kana, when one buys, it is creating, it implies redeeming his people. That's why we need to strengthen the hands of the messengers that they can truly study. I had no time to study last week, my body, my ability. Because of the labor. But I'm ready with the fire this morning, all right? It means redeeming his people. It is the power to acquire knowledge. Herein is wisdom that we understand the mark of the beast. It's acquiring the knowledge to know. It's wisdom to erect and to create. It seems as though that all those qualities are associated with Yah. Isn't that so? So it is in the mind of Yahshua. It is the mind to create the knowledge of Yah from the circumstances and the things uh, that we see. I will show you that again. I want to read the account again in Second Sh uh, Shemuel with that week. But let me finish this. He said, no man will be able to buy or sell. It is ga ga'al. 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 It is to redeem. When one sells, it is to redeem. It is an act as a kinsman redeemer. See, we think that we got to go buy food and clothing. There is nowhere in the book that it says that in Gilgana. Listen to this. This shows you our damn stupidity and how easily we are to be hoodwinked. If these men believe what's going to be, there's going to be a chaotic uh, annihilation of a vast majority of the earth. They believe nuclear bombs are going to be dropped everywhere. Whereby the soil, you cannot grow my bath. 
They believe that everything uh, is just going to be, there's going to be bedlam, there's going to be riots, hell, they're going to tear down the warehouses uh, and take every drop of food. They believe all of that, you understand, uh, the whole system of mankind is erupted. Your damn computers will not mean a damn thing. The coming of your shoe is not going to be seen on a damn television. It's going to be seen as the earth is going to amplify the power of this beauty. And these damn liars tell you that. Damn the television and the computer. When he comes. When that thing we call the shimash, the sun shines, you see it. When it shines in America, everybody sees it, doesn't it? Everybody. We see it first before they see it on the West Coast. It's the same sun. When he comes, it's not going to be you sitting there in front of a damn television. The whole power grid and all of that, now that's how they talk. Is going to be chaotically annihilated. How does one implement a system whereby they talk about the chips in the hands, scanning that they are silly as hell. They're stupid men. They have read books by these damn e effeminate uh, nutsoes uh, that have no knowledge of the Torah of Yah. They deny Torah. And they're inspired to believe that and they teach it to someone who is a, is a newbie and don't know a damn thing. And then press, they take the same damn lie and they run with it. I'm so glad that y'all never allowed my mind to be encumbered and polluted by the damn books and reading. He never allowed that. He never allowed me to be a part of this damn double twisted religious order and the system. I've never been a part of it. None of it. None of it. Not what I order. I was never impressed with it. Because I knew it was wrong. Moving along quickly. No man was able to buy the sale. Has nothing to do with you buying food. Has nothing with you buying clothing. For the agony. When they dropped those bombs on Hiroshima. And knock a socket. They were not worried about buying clothing. And there were those that could not eat for days. And they. And they. And they. And they Pined away, they died in the misery of the agony of their pain. Their flesh rotting on their skin. And you tell me someone is thinking about buying some damn chicken and dumplings or some pork pig feet. It has nothing to do with that. And I will prove it out in the course of these next two or three months. All right? I must fill in all of the backwash. You understand? We must rebuild the wall, Yisraya. You must understand scenarios. Because Yokohan could not speak nothing unless it was according to the Torah. He could speak nothing unless it was according to the witness of the Nobi, the Navi, and the prophets before him. If he spoke anything else, there was no witness of the power, the awe, the light of Yoshua in the man. And so everything he spoke was from the better sheets. And he had to draw from that and everything was revealed uh, according to those testimonies uh, and the testimony of Yah. Anything else is a damn lie. And I must prove it through the course of Torah, all right? No man is able to buy or the sell and the words do not mean what we think buying or selling is. Save unless he had the oath, the mark, the oath, the allegiance, the will, of the name of the Hashem, of the name of the beast, this behemoth, this system, this spirit, this powerful kingdom that does one thing. You notice it said it must have the name. It said it must have the name. Does it say that? Does it say the name? Does Yah says you cannot take my name, the possession, the name? Is the word name Hashim? It is the same. And he had the name. And he had the name. Those that worship Yah must do it in Ruach and in truth. We must worship in the power of the name of Yah. They must have the name. Unless one has the name, they must have the name of the beast. Uh, and look at this. And the number, and the number of his name. The Mahmah. Ma, 
Number implies to be acquainted with, to be associated with, to be a part of. I want to again show you the process, as I said to you all on last Shabbat, that the battle of his enemies of David and what caused that to come, as the prophet writes here in Shemuiah, there was a reason that that was brought upon David. Can I read a few verses here in the book of 2 Shemuel, Shemuel Samuel, chapter 24? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 24. Let me read quickly here, beginning at verse 1. It says, Aragon the af, the anger, the hostility of Yah was kindled against Yisrael. And he moved David against them to say, this is what Yah did, go, go, go and number, nama, go and Number, I want you to mana, go and number, go and number Yisrael and Yehuda. No man can buy or sell unless one has the name of the beast and the number of his name. You must understand why we did this. Just give a brief synopsis. Because he didn't have that true confidence in Yah like we don't have. So in order for him to understand his ability to overthrow his foe, then he wanted to number all the men of the northern tribes of Yisraya and the southern tribes of Yehuda. And then after he'd done all that, he was ashamed because he had no confidence in Yah. And that's why these damn beasts are telling you, listen, it's all right if you put food back. We have more than enough, we put it back. But that's not our salvation. If any man seek to save his life, uh, he's going to lose his life. Uh, if we lose our life for the namesake of Yah and Yeshua, then we shall gain life. Uh, so don't be a damn fool. Uh, grow a garden and raise some food, but that's not going to save us, Yisrael. And so that's why Yah moved on Dawi because he had no confidence in Yah. And we don't have confidence in Yah. That's why this damn whore teach the people there's going to be a rapture. You're going to be caught up there, lawyers. So he had no confidence in Yah. And so Yah said, go number the children of Yisrael and Yahuda. For the king said to Yoab, Yoab is that my father is great. He spoke to a messenger, Yoab. He said, the captain of hosts, which was with him, he said, go now through all the tribes of Yisrael. From Dan to Beresheba, he says, and I want you to mana, I want you to number them. Is not that the system of the beast to number? It is a spirit that denounces Yah. It is a spirit, my bath, that rejects Yah and has no confidence in Yah. That's what it is. That's what it is. So Dawid said, come, you app. And look at the messenger. He said, and number the people that I may know the number of the people. He didn't number the men, the, the boys and the children and the women. He numbered the valiant warriors. He numbered the men. That I may know the number of the people. Isn't that the kingdom of hell? Isn't this the beginning of that spirit to show us what it induces upon a people? Isn't that so, Yisrael? Sure it is. Sure it is. And Yoab said unto the Melech, No, Ya Ar Abba. He adds to the people. How many that he wants to he add? Isn't that Ya adds to the similar daily such as should be your shach? He adds that should be saved. We can add no one. He said, Hasn't Ya done this to the people? Whatever he wants to do. How many soever they be, uh, and hundredfold, uh, and that the eyes of my, my Baal, the king, uh, may see it. And why does my Baal, the Melak, delight in this thing? Why you have Hafez uh, in those numbers? Why is it that you're looking for the numbers, David? 
That's what these whole houses are looking for, numbers. You know it's the sign of a dirty whore. They're looking for numbers to say who's on their membership roll. Damn the numbers. I don't give a damn about numbers. I care about truth and faithful warriors that love Yah. He said, that's Yah's business, my Melech. He called him Be'el. He said, that's his business. He knows what to do. He has brought you to a time, my young Ach. He knows what his plan is. All he wants us to do is trust him. Well, how will I feed my babies? You feed them truth. You buy the Torah. You buy wisdom. You buy understanding. And you don't sell it for damn fling of a lost man. You understand? You buy truth. You buy the Torah. That's what you do. Notwithstanding the king's words prevail. He had power in his words against Yoab. And against the captains of the host. And Yoab and the captains of the host. They went out from the presence of the king. To number the people of Israel. Here is his wisdom. It is unless one will not be able to be redeemed. There will be no kinsman redeeming power for anyone like the whorehouse Catholicism. Say we can pray your damn wicked mama out of purgatory. And people bring offerings and gifts for that. But Yah says no man is going to be able to buy and sell. He's dealing with the kingsman redeeming power. With the creative power of Yah. No man can create what I have done. Yah is the one that created the strength of Yisrael. Yah. And he honored Taiwi because he was the beloved of his heart. And he was the beloved of Yah's heart because Yah elected him. He was not the strongest, he was not the most valiant, but he was the strongest and the most valiant one. He was a ruddy child. That's what he was, Yisra'ya. He did not choose Yisra'ya because they were great for the time that is ahead. We're going to defy the damn numbering. And so everything we see today, even in this vile nation, it is a process of numbering. Census. And all of that. Damn a social security number. They can find you wherever they want to. Did they find Ben Laden? Sure they found him. People are stupid. They are stupid. This is a stupid generation. And all their, what they think is wisdom is coming by some of the most perverted men of hell. And they believe in what they say. But someone like me, they won't buy this truth here. But these men that they believe can't teach it like this. Are you boasting? In that I make my boasting, Yoshua. How much you? They can't teach it like this. Because they don't know it like this. I know that. Can I move on? So the king's word prevail and they pass over. Hallelujah. I want to move down quickly because I want to get to this. Hallelujah. In verse 8. So when they had gone through all the land, they came unto Yerushalayim. What is the city of Yerushalayim? Is that not the city where Yah's name is? I want to bring that out now. I want you to remember that, Yerushalayim. Is that not the city where the name of Yah is? Is that not the city of Shalom? And they came to Yerushalayim at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Yoab gave up the sum of the numbers of the people unto the Melacha. And there were in Yisra'ya 800,000. Does it say valiant in your book? Does it say valiant? Does it say valiant? It is chayil, chayil, strong men of life, my ach, zachenjim, men of great strength. 800,000 valiant men. Did it say women? Did it say children? It said men. Did it say boys? No. It said men. The ish, the fire of Yah's creation. He is a fire. That's why this is a bell spirit is always trying to break down men. You bath and tears, I don't care what y'all. You learn how to love your man and love him. I mean love him. You learn how to love your man. You learn how to love him. You old heads, you teach them how to love their man. 
They don't know. You want to sit around and talk about some bull crap? And you may not allow the ruach of your and the revelation of your shul to show you the beauty and the power of your love for your woman. This damn mess today, it sickens me. And every Sadiq man, he is angered by the oppression. They're oppressing our minds with their damn lies. And if he's not an angry man, then he is a weak uh, He's a weak pig. You hear the analogy all the time, quote, I say it, the angry black man. Do you hear that? You hear that expression to no other nationality of people. You don't hear the angry white man. You don't hear the angry Mexican. You don't hear the angry Arabic. You don't hear the angry Jew man. You don't hear the angry Irish man. It is only the angry black man that's the truth you hear that expression associated with no other ethnicity or any kind of identity forgive me because that's not an ethnicity black no it's white you hear that but with no other class classification of man but that man and that's a fact if i'm wrong you can rebuke me bad you can i know i'm not wrong I'm abreast of many things that don't mean a damn thing, but they have grave significance, my bath. You understand? So any man that is not angry, he's a damn boy. He's an effeminate retard. He has no knowledge of Yah's Torah. We've been taught, oh, just, just say you love. Oh, I love everybody. <laughs> oh, I love everybody. I just got the love of the Lord in me. You don't have a damn thing, you have garbage in you. I love you enough to tell you the fullness of the truth. Hallelujah. And so when he had done all of that, he says again in verse 9, And, Yah, and Yoab gave up the sum of the number, again the word number, the word mana, the appointed one. He uses the words mana. He gave the number, and he numbered the people, and he gave up the number of the people unto the melech. That there were in Yisrael 800,000 valiant men that drew the herab, the sword. We draw a valiant man, he draws, he draws from the sword of the Ruach. He's not one of these little effeminate boys uh, that, uh, that whose understanding of Yah has been painted by those that are corrupt. But he's a valiant warrior. He draws the herab, he draws the sword. Uh, there were, uh, and the men of Yahuda were 500,000 men. And listen now. When die we realize the infringing assault and insult against Yah, and die we's heart smote him after he had heard the number of the people. Listen, Yisrael, I want to tell you that a little, the me or the smallness of a Sadiq man, a righteous man, is greater than all the Isha, the riches of the wicked. And so that we said, we have the Hittites and the Philistines, they're mighty. But Yah said, don't worry about the number. Don't worry about the number of the beast or the number of his name. Don't worry about his number, kingdom. We just have wisdom that we know that our redemption, we have been bought by the dumb of Yoshua, Hamashiach. And he's not going to sell us, Yisrael. He doesn't sell us out because of our sins and our corruption and our wickedness. We've been bought. It is the kinsman redeemer. There is no other kinsman redeemer that is coming. And those that deny Yahshua, those that call themselves Hebrews, you are damn liars. There is no other kinsman redeemer coming that can buy and sell us unto the kingdom of the riches of Yah. He is the only one. His name is Yahshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. David's heart was smote, David. And after he had numbered the people, and David said unto Yah, I have sinned greatly. Isn't this one that is coming? The man of perdition and sin? 
Isn't everything based upon a number that the number of the people? You think that they went and put a chip in the hands of the valiant Hebraic warriors of Israel or of Yehuda? You tell me that they put a mark on their forehead that was permanent like we see the damn Hindus and the worship of the damn pagan spirits. They put the dots and the marks on their heads that are permanent. No, that was not how he did it. When they take the census, do they come and put a chip in your hand or, or a marker? You tell me the people that they sent out to do that to me, uh, they send these little effeminate, nasty dressing women and these fag eyed men, uh, they're going to come and say, you got to take this chip, go to hell, man. Do it off my grounds. This is how damn stupid that analogy is. This is beyond a natural concept. It is spiritually and profoundly spiritual. And we need spiritual men to reveal unto us the depths, the power, the riches of this knowledge. That we may have wisdom, the, the hukmah of Yah. That's what we need. It's a fact. It's a fact. He says, I've sinned greatly, and that I have done. And now I beg of you, oh Yah, take away. Look, now what is the word iniquity? He said, take away the iniquity. Take away the iniquity of thy, abit, thy servant. Well, what is iniquity? I've said that more than one time. It is ovin. It is of wound. Iniquity is one that is total lustness. There is no desire, no passion. To fulfill the commands of the Torah. None whatsoever. So when you find an iniquitous mind. It is a mind that has disdain for the Torah. Isn't this one that is coming. He is the son of iniquity. Is he not coming with all kinds of iniquitous works? Everything that defies the Torah and the numbering of Yisra'ah defy the Torah. You cannot understand Gileana unless you understand the Tathneeth. Was not this a wicked vile thing because iniquity because there is no power of Torah in the bosom of, uh, of the people especially Yisrael it says because iniquity shall abound that the love of many shall wax cold they will have no love for Torah they will have no love for truth because they receive not the love of the Torah the truth of Yah Yah gave them over. He said strong delusions uh, that they may all believe a lie that they all might be damned. So he numbered the people. This is not a new concept. It has always been there. There is nothing new on the Hashemayim. Nothing. Let no one deceive you. Nothing. We must understand this concept and the reason it is the heart that is iniquitous. When the Melach, the one, Mikaya, that fights for Yisrael, when he is removed back with the sword, with the witness of Yahshua, and then this one that worketh all iniquity, as Shaul speaks in Thessalonica, he shall be revealed. He shall be made known. When our minds are so adamantly opposing Torah, we know that there is iniquity there. That's why the Torah was always read. The matter of fact, I want to change even the order of our format of the order of our service. We will do that soon. I've already laid it out. We're reminded of the mitzvah of Yah. We're reminded of the writings of the Torah. We must remember. We must remember. We must zakhah. Zachar has become a memoria. It is a zigron. It is a zigron. It is a zigron. It is a memoria. It is something uh, that is a statue in one's life uh, and one never forgets it. One's birthday, one's anniversary. You never forget that. For when David was up in the morning, verse 11. No, I'm sorry. Let me read this again in verse 10. And David heart was smote after he had numbered the people. And David said unto Yah, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beg of thee, O Yah, take away this iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very evil, I have done very foolishly. This is the spirit of a foolish mind, the mark. We must understand, no man is going to be able to buy and sell. 
I was reading an article this morning. I looked at I didn't read it all, but this is the truth. That there in Germany, that people, people could come and get free grocery or one stipulation. It's cold. It's chilly in Germany. If they come in the store naked, men, women, and all for the free groceries. This is a stupid world. It doesn't take much to sell it anything. I say, how wicked. How wicked. So when Dawi was up in the morning, verse 11, 2 Shemu, Yah 24, verse 11, <clears throat> the word of Yah came unto the Nabi. That's why we need a prophet. There shall arise two mighty messengers of Yah, and where are they going to be destroyed? In the city of uh, where? Yerushalayim. And whereby the spirit of that city is what? Uh, Sidam and Misraim. It is Sodom and Gomorrah. It is Sodom and Egypt. And here rises up this one God, the Nobi. Uh, he was a seer and he said unto David, uh, he said, this is what Yah said. Uh, I offer you three things. Uh, you choose the one of them. He said, you choose one of them. Offer you three. Now you choose the one. He gives a list of the things that he offered. You all read that because I want to move quickly. Hallelujah. And I want to drop down to verse 16 quickly. This is after Yah set the pestilence, this great battle upon Yisrael. And when the Melach, verse 16, and when the Melach stretched out his hand upon Yerushalayim to destroy it, Yah repented him to do this ra, this evil, and said to the Melach that destroy the people. It was such a carnage. It was such death, the wailing. It was such a carnage. We have numbered ourselves, was not your sure numbered with the transgressors. We have numbered ourselves with the transgressors. We acquire their actions, their deeds, their manifesto, their habits. Uh, we must study out this book. That's why we need messengers, men, uh, that we did not go through his inner perspective. He went to the prophet God. Uh, he was a king, these damn dirty dogs that lied to the people. You don't need nobody. He went to God. He went to God. He went to God. You know, it means true. But it also means there's a God that is known by the name of God. And troop as well. Hallelujah, it's in the book. So we need men to study out the phrases and the wording of the Torah. Hallelujah. We need that, Yisrael. We need that importantly. Not to live like some fat hog of a pig, rich, eating steaks all day and fat as a dog. I use that when I use the word fat. Now, that has nothing to do with some physical appearance, but yet it will be the result of that. It has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about they're fat, greedy dogs. They can't have enough. They're never satisfied. They don't want three cars, they want ten. They don't want a $200,000 house. They want a half million. Then a $750,000, then a million dollar house. They don't want that. That's the truth. $200 suit doesn't satisfy them. They want a $2,000 suit. $200 pet shoes is not enough. They want $2,000 shoes. $1,000 belts and belt buckles. You'd be surprised. These damn dirty bastards out of hell, what, what they do with, and they rape the minds of the people, and especially the women because they're laden with sin, with folly. You can't tell them a damn thing. Yah says, it is enough in verse 16. It is enough. Stay now, your hand, Melach. And the Melach of Yah was by the... Look at now, look where he was. He was about to destroy this. Look. He was about the threshing place. Do you understand that? He's bringing us to the threshing place. That's what the zara, the trials of your Yaakov, the troubles of your Yaakov. Look at the position. You think that that has no significance? It's all about worship, my Aka. He was by the threshing place. He was there by Arunah. The Jeb you sight. 
the place where the fine meal was grind, and the flowers for the offering, the lechem offering, the bread offering unto Yah. There was no offering that was accepted that was not accommodated by the bread offering. We must offer up the living bread, you're sure, the bread of life. He is the bread of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour your ruach among us, our understanding, or not our eyes. He was by the threshing floors. What a place to be. He's going to grind us and sift us. He's going to get the wickedness out. But my trials, your trials are no different than no one. They're personal to you because they're your trials. I have never thought that way that someone else hasn't experienced what I experience. I to think that my situation is, is so tadamant to anyone else's. That's so stupid. I've never thought that way. I've never thought that way. I've never thought that way. Even as a silly, ignorant man as I am today. I don't want to be silly because I don't like silliness. But I never thought that. He was by the threshing floor, and Dawi spoke unto Yah. And he saw the Melach that smote the people, and said, he says, Lo, this is what he says to Yah. He says, My Abba, hallelujah, I have sinned. I have done wickedly. I have Russia, I have transgressed your Torah with great imputative of damage my purpose was to defy you he said but these sheep these little ones these sheep what have they done my that's, ah are we not the sheep of the past of Yah? that's what Yahshua said he said they have done wickedly but what have I done he did nothing that's all right I like that hallelujah I like that he said, but what have they done? He said, my Abba, Appala, let thine yard. They don't, people don't realize that your shoe is the right hand of Yah. This is, the, this is his sword, his head wrap. You understand? His right hand. He said, let thine hand. I beseech thee, I pray of thee, Appala, I entreat you, I beg of you. Let it be against me. And against my avats house his bed and God came that day to David and said unto him go up listen now he said I want you to go up and rear an altar unto Yah in the threshing floor he said I want you to go through the threshing floor of a Ru'na the Jebusite and the Melach was there by the threshing floor it's all about the offering of the pure worship no man will be able to offer up for redemption. Hell, a damn biscuit or a Dunkin' Donut is not going to give you strength in that day. Yeah. You're going to need the strength of the assurance of the redeeming power. Yes. And that's what that we numbered this right here. He figured it's his own strength because uh, he's going to take away all of our strength. He's going to take away your ability to fight. He's going to fight the battle for Israel. And he has raised up a power and a kingdom of darkness of great strength. His anger is in that heart. His, uh, his, uh, his tenacity of anger and his wrath is in the heart of Hashotan. I'm not going to make it formulated in a way that's appeasing to our wicked hearts. Let's speak like David. I'm wicked. I've done my ark wrong. I've done my heart wrong. Of sin. We don't even say that. I will mind. We don't even say that. Sin against Yisraya, your ach, your hot. Lay your damn gift down and come to the altar. It's about the offering, the gift of redemption. These damn dirty bastards, they tell you they're about silver and gold. They're going to cast the silver and gold into the street. They're liars and they're living off the fatness of the resources 
of the money. They're telling you to buy food that will last 20 years. Hell, I want the food of Yah that is now. And he rained down, what is this? Manna. You all make a song about the manna, all right? He rained down nothing but manna. And it was fresh. He said, don't try to store it up. He's going to give us a living word in the midst of all of your great agony. It should be a living word that shall raise you up. You're going to need more than a damn biscuit. You're going to need more than some damn silver. Some gold. You're going to need that emona that has been tried. And the promises of Yahis Dabarim, his word is rich in your bosom. And no gates of hell that is open shall prevail against you. It shall not break you down. So don't bother their damn supplies that last 20 years. Uh, send the offering here. I will use it to feed you the bread of life. Uh, don't bother. Don't fall along with their little lies. Uh, buy silver, you damn liars. Uh, you're making the people have confidence in silver. Isn't that what they did when he brought them out of Mr. A.M.? They took off their gold earrings and their silver ring, their bracelets, the bracelets, and then they make a god. And these damn dirty bastards are making a god out of silver. I know that's right. And these shallowly weak men, they are being persuaded by it. They are not maybe telling the people, but they're buying silver. Someone sent me a bag of silver. I mean, it's a nice bag of silver. You all saw it. Damn silver. I appreciate the gift of the ark. But I'm not selling it. I didn't keep it. I gave it to her and she's been pinching off of her. I said, don't pinch off for one time. Because I, when I make a statement, I mean what I say. I just don't speak off the cuff. Like, man, I'm an excellent listener. Sometimes I issue, you know, you're not listening. Baby, I know what you said. I, I, I don't, okay, that's it. I don't want no more. I know what you're going to say because I know, I, I know your expressions. I know the expression of Yisra'ya. I don't need to hear no more. I'm going to make this plain to you if it kills me, if I die. So you all take the mantle up if I die and continue this, all right? Hallelujah. Yeah. And thy weeds, according to the sin of God, so he went up. Where did I stop now? He said, I've done wickedly. He did all of the sin according to God. Uh, let me move over here. It says, uh, hallelujah. Verse 19. Listen. It says in verse uh, 19. Let me read that. I want to read this quickly. It says, and I read according to the saying of God. Uh, he went up as Yah commanded. Yah survived him. Uh, he said, this is what I want. Look at this now. He said, I want you to do this. Uh, and it says, and a root now looked uh, and saw the Melech and his servants uh, coming toward him. Can you imagine uh, how uh, the population of his heart uh, how it began to beat the king? Who would have I done when you see the lawman right behind you, you're driving, don't you wonder what you've done? I was purring in that big tiger, that big international. She purrs like, oh. She purrs like a big cat. It's striding. And I'm on 151. Of course, they're getting close to that nasty day, the, the independence of what? No, it is the bondage day. And I know they ride strong around here at that time. And I'm purring down the highway and I'm, pass, I'm passing cars and everything. She just, she just purring just like, and that turbo kicks in and she just, she doesn't grind. She just says, come on, come on, boy, just ride me. And she's purring down the highway. And here was a deputy sheriff. They ride here. And all of a sudden his light comes on. He slows down and he turns and I say, oh, I know he got me. Of course, I'm purring now. I'm, I'm still foot to the pedal. And the only thing I'm looking to see if, if he, I, say, I can see him flying up on me. Boop, 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 boop. I say, yeah, I haven't had a kicking in 25 years nearly. I, I don't want that. And he turned around and said, oh, no, I don't want to see that light go boop, boop, boop. And boy, they, they can roll in those vehicles, you understand? Hit that gas. <laughs> And so I'm looking and my heart and my hands get a little sweaty. We can't afford a ticket. So can you imagine 
him when he saw the Melach, his servant, and the contingency of the host of his uh, Milchaya, his military power. He saw him coming toward him, and Arunach, he went out and he bowed himself before the Melach on his face upon the ground. He got down. No, no, no. Listen. He didn't do He got down. <laughs> Yeah, my king, my melech, he bowed himself. You understand? He got down on the dirt. He bowed himself before the king on the earth. That's right. Aruach said, Wherefore is my Be'el, my master, my melech? Why have you come to this, your servant? And I we said, look at this, to buy, he had to redeem. He had to redeem Yisrael. He had to redeem. He had to pay the price of a kinsman redeemer. He had to come out. No man. You're not going to be redeemed. He said, it come to ask. You think that he will not have given. He said, I come to buy. I come to buy. I come. Hallelujah. I like this. We must understand the foundation of truth. Yisrael. That we said, I come to buy the threshing floor from you. To build an altar. A misbeach. An altar unto Yah, that the plague may be stayed. There shall be plague, pestilent, and great agony of that day. And when one is plagued, you're not worrying about a Dunkin' Donut, a Bojangles chicken box. You understand? What a man is on the agony and the thralls of death, he's not worrying about fried chicken. That has always amazed me in this wicked, corrupt nation when one is on death row. They will give them their last meal. And I've gone and read some of the meals that people have asked for. Prison 25 years, they want, Boj they want uh, McDonald's, Big Mac, strawberry shake. Who thinking about eating when you know you're going to die? I'm not. Death all on you. This fellow there in California, the last one, they, they, they uh, took him with him, the one that started the, the blood gang. They asked him, what do you want? He said, I don't want a damn thing. You're going to kill me. Just kill me. But you'll be surprised at things that people ask for. I want some shrimp. I want some catfish. They will spend $50 most states to give you the last meal. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Feed me the bread. I would say, find the prophet God. Let him enter into the cell and pray unto the hour that my nephesh is satisfied and fill with the lachim of Yah. Damn some fried chicken. Yeah. Give me the bread of life. He said, I want to buy it. He did not say, I want you to give that to me. He said, I want to buy. I want to by the threshing floor, that I may build an altar unto Yah, that the plague may be stayed from my people, Yisra'ah. Yeah. He said, I want the plague stayed. I want them delivered. And Aruch Nach said unto Dawid, My master, my Be'el, my Melach, he said, Take an offer of what that Yah has placed in your bosom that is tov, what seems right to you unto the Most High. He said, Behold, here are the oxen and the burnt offerings or, or the burnt zabach, the zabach, the sacrifice. I use it that time, Zachin Yaramiyah. He said, and the threshing instruments uh, and the other instruments of uh, the oxen for wood. There shall be, Hashatan is the threshing instrument of Yah. We're going to offer up the right offering unto Yah. We're going to buy, we're going to buy the truth. We will, we're going to walk the truth, Yisra, Yah. 
We're in that time of agony. We're in the throes of pain. We're in the birth pain. Yeshua is trying to come forth out of us. Uh, the power of that testimony. And we let our damn sins uh, and our damn iniquitous ways. Uh, we don't train our minds in the Torah of Yah. And we think because we smile, <laughs> hey, brother, oh, sit the high. <laughs> we think we're right. You're damn phony and wicked. I like individuals that are straight up. I had this silly individual call me again. And talking about, yeah, Akshimri and Eusebio said something about him. I said, man, I talk about your damn wicked bull dagger aunt and a faggot effeminate husband. How about that? No, I respect you. I said, no, no, no. I talk about them. She's a bull dagger. I don't take it back. And her husband is an effeminate boy. How about that? I said, look, man, I don't even deal with you. Don't, don't even call me. Okay, I'll, I, don't mess with me. I'm not going to let you attack my ark. Warriors that have stood with me and these little weak, effeminate boys out there, what are they doing? We're living wickedly? True. Living like damn dogs? True. Faggot? Yeah. You know this young lad said to me, he said, Ray, you'd be surprised the men that are faggot. He said, faggotism is everywhere. He says, everybody's faggot. He said, they love that faggot Facebook and all of that. And they want to put up these little effeminate pictures. He said, they, they, they're damn stupid. And this is from a damn ignorant kid. And I told him, I said, you're stupid. Well, I respect you. I said, you don't respect. You don't even know what respect is, boy. You don't know a damn thing about respect. So I don't, your respect means nothing to me. That's amazing. I talk to folks like that. Because I'm not a coward. Somebody knock you out. Can I ask you a question? Who is the, one of the baddest men on the earth was known as who? Mike Tyson. Did he get knocked out? Muhammad Ali, he sting like a bee and move like a butterfly. He said, come on, gorilla. And Joe Frazier knocked him, broke his jaw. So what? Was your shoe the most tenacious, terrifying one that ever walked on shoe sure was? And yet he was bruised and beat for Yisra'ya. There's a plague that is coming, Yisra'ya. Hear me, please. It's beyond any kind of formation of thoughts and creative superlatives of a linguistic language or speech that we can even phantom the expression of that. Mere words cannot express it. We must move in the Ruach of Yah. That's the only way. We have walked in the flesh so damn much we have corrupted every damn thing. We're nothing but a pack of greedy swines. And that's why he's not casting his pearls. We're trampling his pearls. I don't give a damn about that. That's how we talk. We better get real. With Yah. He says everything is there. Was that not so with Abraham and Yushach? He went by the command and everything was there to offer up. Yet in the midst of that, when he drew back the dagger, there was the ram, the sin offering for Yisrael. Hallelujah. Caught in the thickets. Hallelujah. Yoshua has been caught up in the ram of this earthly, uh, earthly ram, but yet uh, he was not scarred by it. And Yah had the ram there, and he knew that Abraham, just like Dawid, you don't number. I'm not looking at numbers. Who's going to stand with Yah? Shaul said, "When I came among you, people of Israel, there was no man that stood with me, but Yah was on my side." It's going to seem in your desolation in the place that you're in now that there's no one else. I hear that all the time. There's no one here that serves you. Stop it. It's in your little world. That's all you know. That's in the parameter of your circumference. That's just it. Hallelujah. There are few that are scattered. The boy here. They're scattered throughout the world. There are some... 
Again, verse 22, this is vitally important. Don't, don't become, I have 28 pages to teach you, 28 pages of script, 29. So don't get, don't allow yourself to become bored with this. You cannot understand, how do you think you're going to understand Revelation when you don't even understand Bereshit? And so these men can take you to Revelation and say things that you've never heard and it seems right. But this is going to be right when I finish. Oh, you're going to have to go back and listen again and again and listen to the process. But uh, the knowledge will be revealed the more you listen. The more it comes to light. The more you listen. The more the revelation is revealed unto you, Yisrael. And that's the truth. He said, everything is here to offer up unto Yah the instruments uh, and all that you need. Uh, and these things did uh, as a melach give unto the king. Aruchna said unto the melach. He said, Yah, the mighty Abba, accept thee. But look at thy wheat. No man can buy or sell. See, thy wheat had the mark of Yah's beloved righteousness in him. Although he defied Yah, all have sinned. And all have fell short. It did not say we have not fallen into the depth of darkness. All have come short of the inspiration and the splendor of Yah. It is not the revealed revelation of the beauty uh, of your shoe that reflects from us. Uh, hell, my damn dirty flesh reflects from me. Uh, that's why I must be impelled daily. It's a continuous process. You've got to bring it down uh, to the gates of hell when you were right. Nutty as a wicked damn fool. Uh, you need to break the shackles of that mind. Uh, yeah. It's me, uh, I'm in need of that. Uh, you don't have to act the same way today you did yesterday and the day before that. I'm a brand new me in Yorkshire Hamashiach. Hell, I don't have to experience it to learn it. We know to do excellent, we do right. The Torah teaches us excellent. It teaches us the right thing to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Hallelujah. And the Melach David, this one that is beloved of Yah, he spoke unto Aruchnach, this Yebusite, and said, No, he said, No, nothing of that. No, but I will surely, Hana, did he not speak of, he said, Yah, let it be upon me, but this, these sheep, it is my sins that has incurred this upon them. You give me three things to choose from. Yah, let there be a stay of your tremendous destructive powers. He's going to bring the four sword judgment upon Yisrael and the nations of the earth. Because we have sinned egregiously. And we're so damn arrogantly, we don't acknowledge our sin and say, it's me. Yeah. Not my brother, sister, mama, daddy, but it's me, precious. Yeah. I need your deliverance. Yeah. I need that. You can't pray mama, daddy, and no one else until you get through. You must save yourself from this untoward generation of wicked surmising against Yah. He is the one again, he says that I will, I will be the one that originate this redeeming power with Yah. I will erect this altar that Yisrael may be redeemed by the power of this offering. Where I acquire it from you, uh, I will purchase it. No, I don't want you to give it. He said, it from you for price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings to Yah of my Abba, that which does not cost me nothing. I want to tell you something. Uh, this walk is going to cost you everything. Uh, 
It's going to cost you mama, daddy, brother, son, sister, daughter's wife, husband. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you riches, gold, silver, and all. He said, I don't want it. If it costs me nothing. I don't want to walk this way. Walk if it costs me nothing. If it costs me nothing, I don't want it. Even in the world, it costs you to live. He said, I don't want it. I will not offer one thing unto Yah. That's why the offerings of Yah must be pure. If there is no experience of trials and agony of the Sarah, the great fire of trials that we endure, we should not think that there are strange things that have happened unto us. We should rejoice. We should rejoice, Israel. So the trials of tribulation, it is not a strange thing for us. It is the proving of the kingdom power of our Rabbi. It's not a strange thing. It's a time of great rejoicing, Israel. He said, I will not offer one offering. You see that Hashatan, as he quoted the verse in uh, Tehillim 91 to Yeshua, that any time you shall, he shall give his melachim charge over you. He said, any time you should dash your foot against the stone. You think he has not searched this? No man will be able to buy or to sell. Oh, there's much greater depth to this. I will bring it to light by the Ruach of Yah. No power of my own self. No wisdom that I have created. It is the wisdom of this book that we despise. He said, no sir. I will not offer any offering to Yama Abba of that which does not cost me nothing. You got to pay the price. The rich young ruler said to Yahshua, he called him tough master. Of course, there's no one that is tough but Yah. And so he knew that he was of Yah, that's why he called him tough master. You understand? He said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? He said, what does the Torah say? To love your neighbor? To do tav? You should not covet? He said, that I've kept from my youth up. Yahshua said, you like yet, but one thing, go and sell that thou hast, give to the only, those that have no strength, uh, to leave and to walk in the way of Yah. Not because someone is in poverty. Give to those that desire to be with me, uh, and yet there's a threshold of their own. Uh, give that to them that release them, uh, and they can follow me. And it says that the rich young ruler, because he had much, he went away sorrowful. He didn't follow Yahshua. He didn't want to go behind him. We must, uh, we must see the scenarios in Torah. We must, uh, we must lay all things in the order that Yah has laid it out for us in order to understand. Uh, you can't understand the word buy or sell. It's in the book over, over 5,000 times. 5 or 6,000. So you must search the, the scripture. You must search them. And so you can't do that in 15-20 minutes. It take hours and days and hours and days and hours and hours and days. So I do barak you when he grants me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. But now we must keep our babies warm because there may be a junior zakhin coming. So we want to make sure the babies are warm and, and the houses are warm. And so I've been hauling wood. And always rib ak shimri about that driving with that. Of course that can be agonizing. In the course of a day, I'd rather be on the ground with a chainsaw. I'm serious. But that, give me the chainsaw, man. I don't mind working that. I work that thing pretty well. Can I ock your safe? I can. So if I have to go out with the ock, I know how to work that thing. So it's not an easy task. I don't see how he does what he does when he gets in after doing that. One day he calls me, I say, man, mm -mm, not today. Can't do it. I can't move, man. Mama, just, just give me something to eat. Let me prop my feet up. So I came and just said, oh, man, I, I was gone. I was flat out gone because I hauled two loads yesterday. At the road. But I want to make sure that we're warm, Yisraya, and the wood is there. I want to get every drop we can get. And I'm going to get every drop. 
You understand? Hallelujah. Can I move on a little further? I shall. He said, I will do it for nothing. So David, he khana, no man will be able to khana, to buy, to be, he redeemed, he bought, he bought the threshing floor of the green at this place, this place of the corn, this barn floor, and the oxen of the bacha, he bought it for 50 shekels of silver. It took money to get that, didn't it? Keshem is the same for money, for silver, medium of exchange. It is the same word. He bought it for 50 shekels of silver. And Taiwit, he built an altar, this Misbeach, to Yah. The altar is our uh, love. It is the Laba, the mind. That we keep our minds stayed on Yah in Yeshua. And we allow the wondrous works of Yah to build that platform, that altar. So we can go in and offer up the offerings of Todah. One of Yada, it is a thankfulness that is expressed with such joy and such ambience of beauty and fragrance of expression. Not this damn stuff we call Toda Ya Torana. There's a beauty. It is an ambience. It's a fragrance. It is a sweet fragrance, a, a smell. Because you have an altar. You are built it upon the experiences of Yah. You're built it upon the trials and the agony. And yet He has proven Himself unto us. Uh, and the offerings become more beautiful. As you go to countries or see places whereby they offer the offerings unto their gods, uh, they become more elaborate. Uh, they become more beautiful in the sense that they are appealing to the eyes. Uh, they have altars in their homes. Uh, they put food. Uh, and put things on the altar for their gods. Just like Abraham and his father and their gods and their offering just like Laban with Yaakov and their gods. And so it becomes this altar, the, this misbeak, our mind becomes the altar. And we see the beauty of Yah. And so that there's a consendra of a praise that is so beautiful. And our Torah is not just Torah Yah, it is something of great. Yah, Torah Yah, Torah, it is a great beauty. And the smell of that is so, so beautiful. Hell, we don't even know how to say that. Because we're born into the world. And we look to the world. We look to the damn government. We look to uh, the ways of the world. We ought to look unto Yah. He supplies everything. He supplies your strength. He supplies your uh, your your esha, your happiness in life. It's not coming from a damn car or a house you own. It's a burden because the house you got forty years payment. Not many have monies to pay cash for a house. And in those that have that kind of money, they're not paying cash. They're trying to get every right off they can. And so they're improvising so the government doesn't get every damn nickel. I said to the, uh, that man, Mr. Bill Gates, the wicked, greedy dog out of hell. Uh, no maximum wage, but there's a minimum wage. You understand? He had a house over a hundred some thousand square feet uh, that would seat several other people in the dining hall. Uh, and he said the house was not big enough for him and his family of a wife and two sons. Uh, what a dirty piece. What do you think he built the house for him to live in? He built that for entertainment. He built that that he can entertain the clientele of Microsoft. And he writes it off. You think he paid cash? No, sir. He borrowed the money from the company. With stipulations, as long as he is a part of the board, he can live there. He has a right to live there. He never owns it. Hell, why does he need to own a house when he can build any kind of house he wants to? See, that's how they have ingrained our damn stupid minds that we will pay 40 years. For you are silly as hell. You're silly. What can you do in a house but eat and sleep in bush? And that is the signet or the sign of our great success. That is so stupid. That is so stupid. It is stupid as it comes. It is. You don't have to buy it. It's still stupid. 40 years. 
Yeah, my house. What house? That's the landlord. He's the Lord of that. That we said, you will not be the Baal over this altar. I will buy it and offer unto God. So there is no landlord. There is no ruling law that rule over our mind. So we know what to buy. We buy truth and we don't sell it not. We buy the truth of God. We don't sell it. We buy wisdom. We buy understanding. We buy the judgment of God. Yisrael. Hallelujah. I had to lay this down in order for us to proceed to understand this. I had to lay this down. And it's one thing about an altar. You must have, as our Zakhain has been teaching us, you must have the ish. Am I right about that, Zakhain Aramiya? And if I'm wrong, tell me. I'm right. You must have the ish. You must have the fire. You must have that. Quickly as I move. Hallelujah. And David, he built the altar, the Mizbeach to Yah, and he offered up the burnt offerings and Shalom offering. Because of that, 2 Shemuel 24 25, it says Yah was intrigued. He was intrigued. That's amazing that Yah was intrigued. He was intrigued. He was hafiz. He was pleased. He was satisfied. He was pleased for the land. And the Magatha, the plague, this great slaughter of the people, was stayed from Yisrael. There is a plague beyond our ability to comprehend and our convoluted, polluted mindset. This is just a tasnith to give us an understanding of the death that shall rule the land because. Uh, of the iniquity, the ovon, the wickedness of a nation that was earmarked, established to show the excellence of Yah and to be a berechaya unto all nations of the earth. And yet we have become entrenched in this wicked world. We are buying the world. We're selling out truth to buy the world. We are ashamed of Yah to buy relatives and kinsmen's uh, associations and friendships. Uh, and they're not friends because if you have a true friend, you're wounded uh, in the house of a friend. It's one thing about a friend, they will wound you. I say to the Ach, uh, as we was talking the other day, I said, it's amazing, Ach uh, Yosipia, this man here, he will not even let me get by with what I said. You see how he has scrutinized it? You see how he has riddled me? You see what his words are, man? I said, you have, I said, but this man here, I'm not going to mention the man's name. I say, but this man, he never loves me. I said, leave it alone because he's got always, he's got always. You see how? Don't worry about it. We know who I'm talking about. We just won't mention the name at this time. Maybe at a later time, all right? You all don't even get what I'm saying. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't even get it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says he was intrigued that he caused the plague to be removed from the land. Can I ask you all a question? You think that Yah is warning this wicked generation or he is warning his house? He's just warning his house. One more from what I read last week and I want to move into the depths of this teaching today. I have a little time. From the book of Matithi Yah again. Matthew 3, 7. It says, when Yachohan, when he saw the Pushim or the Pharisees, he saw the Sadducees or the Sadduchim. He saw them coming to his michva, to the immersing into the body of Yoshua HaMashiach. He said unto that generation, he said, Oh, generation, oh, generation, he calls them of vipers, of fetin, of vicious, poisonous, angry, wicked, Snakes, vipers. You are nothing but a tannin. You're a serpent. 
I was reading this morning how they practice that damnable twisted religion there in the hills of West Virginia, North Carolina, where they dance with these black rattle, these rattlesnakes, diamondbacks. Well, this one young man, he had been bit several times and lived, but this time he got bit, he died. And yet they think that the literally or the literal aspect of what Yahshua said, they shall be able to pick up any deadly thing and it shall not harm them. Well, first of all, and those that say that they shall cast out demons, they are not picking up the deadly things. And the ones that are picking up the snakes are not casting out demons. You, you see how this convoluted, damn mind of Christianity twists things? And so he got bit by the rattlesnake and he died. No, I'm not handling a rattlesnake because I'm wise. I see the serpent coming. I know. I, I take my position and I pull out the sword of Yah to cut his head off. If I see a rattlesnake, I'm going to cut the head off of it. That's why I cut the heads off these damnable snakes today. The devils, they slither in like dogs. He said, you are a twisted individual. You are a fetten. He said, who has Zaha, who has admonished you? Who, who has been your teacher? Who has instructed you? Listen to what he says. To flee the harun, the wrath. That is to come. Who has warned you to flee the fiery indignation, the fire of the utterance of Yah, that shall be. That is one thing that we must understand, Yisrael. That this enemy is going to emulate or try to emulate everything that Yah does. So when Dawid built that altar, he had the fire to be kindled. And they consume the offering before Yah. That's why he's going to deliver us by the fiery trials and the fire. We must understand this valuable aspect of Yah as I want to introduce this today and the remaining of the service. I want you, Yisrael, there's a writing there. Hallelujah. In, uh, in the book of Yeremiah, I mean, I'm sorry, I want to begin here in the book of Genesis, Bereshit. The book of Bereshit here quickly, Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. When Yah, in the very power of his destruction by the Ish, he also delivered by the same fire, did he not? Here in the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. You think that Hashatan has not seen the power of the relevance of this Ish? Uh, Zohin Rabbi Yah said, the voice of us, the call of Yah, is like a fire that divides it divides Yisrael. Yeah. It can divide the waters, the fire of Yah. His word is such fire that it divides the waters. And a water, it puts out the fire, doesn't it? And so here's the display of Yah that is so profound here. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 24, it says, Because of the ovin, the wickedness of Yisrael, the corruption of Yisrael, because of the vileness of Yisrael, it says, Genesis 9 24, Then Yah... Rain down as he mata as the hell upon Sidam and upon Omara, brimstone, garif, and it says fire, the anger of Yah. He is angry with the wicked every single day. And he rained down upon Sidom and Gomara, the fire of his indignation, the fire of his authority. Do we believe that it's literally going to be like the Lehay say, uh, that the nuclear bombs are going to fall? You know, this is how they have relegated their little damn twisted God. But this does not say that there were nuclear bombs. It said that Yah, He Mata, He rang down as hailstorm, as the balls of hell, and the fire came down like hell. That's why he uses the word Matha. It was like balls of fire like hell. He rained it down. Not some damn cheap nuclear bomb. Not some little nuclear reaction. It is the power of the voice of Yah. He's going to consume this world of wickedness. He's going to allow the hand of darkness to spread its tentacles. He's going to show his power to redeem Israel. 
Damn our pantries. They're not going to save us from the indignation that has been commanded by our sins. We must be purged of every, every action, every deed, every investment we have in sin. It must come out. It must come out. The same scenario with Yaakob. He had the wrestle. I will not let you go. Until Yabrach. Until he poured down his Berechaya upon me. Yah says, I'm going to make sure that your walk is not your walk anymore. So I'm going to touch the hull of your thigh and you're going to walk. Halt it. Hallelujah. So we know we can't walk by ourselves unless we walk under the arms of Yah in your shoe. He says, I'm going to halt your walk. So you'll know it's not you walking now. Hallelujah. So he halted. He's going to have to halt our damn wicked walk. We walked away of sin and every kind of damn corruption there is. He's going to halt our walk. You understand? He's going to stop you from walking and thinking and talking and doing the things that you do, Yisrael. Yah says, now you have prevailed. You're no more Yaakov, you're Yisrael for Yah. My power has prevailed in your bosom, Yisrael. And only then will the power of the testimony of your shield prevail in us. We won't. You know the way I used to walk. I don't walk no more since Yah touched my hollow thigh. You won't walk the way no more. You won't talk the way you talk no more. Hallelujah. I might as well stop there then, shouldn't I? No, I got a little more to go. I'll stop. Uh, all right, Akmikaya, don't send me an email and say, don't do that. I'm wore out now. He told me, don't wear yourself out last night. He wrote, say, don't wear yourself out now. You, you know, you got tomorrow, so just, you know, in essence, he said, just chill out. Don't, don't exhaust yourself. Uh, uh, we need you tomorrow. Hallelujah. It says that Yah said he caused the fire to come down from Yah out of Hashemayim. That's an insult to Yah to say that the fire shall come from nuclear bombs. Elijah, he did not call no nuclear bombs. He called upon the Ish, the fire of Yah. That's the power of his Torah. When the witness of Yah is with us and his witness shall be with Yisrael, we're going to overcome. We're not going to love our lives unto the death, Yisrael. We're going to overcome. We have the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we're going to keep the mitzvah of Almighty Yah. We're not going to call on but one name. We're not calling on the damn Be'er. We're not calling on the damn Lord Jesus. We're calling on the name of Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. We're not calling on the damn Jesus. Damn Jesus. Damn that name. And that damn faggot freak image that has been purported and ingrained in the minds of Yisrael. It is the damn seductive spirit of hell. It is none of y'all. It's an image of those that lied to you and corrupted your damn wicked minds. I ain't turning back from that. I am not afraid to say that. It is the truth. And if you defend that, you're sick in your damn mind. We're easy to believe a lie, but the truth, we won't believe the truth. You can tell us a lie, we just get, we get enthralled and wrapped it with a lie. Just like tattle tellers and busy bodies, everybody wants to hear them because they always got something to say. But they never tell on themselves. Something is wrong when one never tell. I always tell on myself. You that are around me, you, you're, you always say, if you're around me enough, I always tell on myself. Well, I did that, Ark. I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I did do that. I did that, Ark. When you find someone that's always, all they got to do is tell on someone else, you get away from that wicked Jezebel, that liar. Because title tellers always lie. They always inject, add, alter. When you find people that are town tellers, they're liars. When you find people that love to talk all the time, not about them, but about someone else, they're liars. I'm not taking that back. They're damn liars. Why not talk about you? Why not say, come on, I, come on, I'm greedy, I love to eat, I'm fat, I'm overweight, I'm silly, I'm dumb. Oh, you know she, he, they, them? Come on. I will, man. Now that I will do. Hallelujah. Again, here, Yisrael, 
It says that Yah caused fire to come down out of the heavens. Did he not? Did he use the nuclear bomb or, the, or, or was the power that his voice, his call? Uh, can, can I use that expression, my zakhain, his call, his voice? Uh, that's the fire. When he speaks, it's the fire. We must have evidence of that in Torah, in the book of Shemoth, Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, it says this. When Yah presented himself unto the lawgiver, is not Moshe the lawgiver? Uh, is not your sure the lawgiver? Is he not the fulfillment of the power of the Torah of Yah? He is not this little weak uh, jackass of a thing that we've been taught through this damn effeminate Jesus. He's not that. That's why you find most of those men effeminate men. They, they're some weak men. They're weak. Damn Jesus thumpers. We all been on that boat. Glad you come in on the boat when it was time to get on the right ship. That's all right. That's right. You don't have to go through all of that maze of folly. Y'all say, get on the boat. This boat is sailing for Tizayon. How do you get on now? Hallelujah. You find this little feminine nature in these weak boys. Listen here in Shemoth, Exodus 3.2. It says, and the Melach, the messenger, that's what a Melach is. It is a messenger of Yah, the Melach of Yah. He appeared or he ra'a, he made himself known to Moshe in a laba, in a flame of ush. In a flame of fire. It is the supernatural power of Yah's word. His word is supernatural, it's beyond our ability to comprehend, that's why when the, when the word of Yah is spoken unto, it is, to, it is to rid us of all the dross, to burn it up. It is to remove all dross from our minds and our bosom. He spoke to him out of the fire, out of the midst of the bush, and he looked and behold, he said the bush was fire, and the bush was not achal. It was not devoured. It was not consumed. Even the fire of his word, it doesn't consume us. Even the word sarah, it is the fire of fiery trials. It shall not dissipate, Yisra'ya. It shall not cause us to be achal, to be devoured by the hands of hell. As our Zakim pointed out, when they went down into the dungeons of Sheol of hell, and yet there was three, and yet there was one that looked like the Sarah man that appeared with them, your shoe in the midst of all. All of this, uh, he shall be the crown uh, of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. He is not about to allow his kita uh, to be removed from his head uh, and cast to the feet of hell. Uh. Yeah. Now we're going to take our crowns and cast them before. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. As old folks, I feel this today. Yeah. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, you that are friends of the world, you're a friend of Hanshatan. So he spoke from this bush with the fire of Yah. Yeah. You think Hanshatan, look at this account here in Giliana Revelation. 13, 13. Revelation chapter 13, Giliana 13, 13. He identifies, Yakahan identifies he. As the pseudo prophet, Revelation 13 13, it says, and he does great. Look at the word that he uses. He does great. I don't use the word more faith. I use Simeon. I use the Greek in that expression. He does great wonders. So that he makes what he makes come down? Fire comes down from Hashem Am on the earth. In the sight of man. Is this one that works the works of the deviousness of hell? He calls fire to come down in the midst of the earth. Well, why did he do that? How? What is the reason for that? Look at the next verse. It says, and deceive them. And deceive them that dwells on the earth uh, by the means of those Simeons uh, or the miracles uh, which he had power to do in the sight uh, of the beasts. Uh, Send to them that dwell on the earth. Listen to what he says. Uh, he didn't say a damn thing about getting your pork chop sandwiches. Uh, said to them on the earth uh, that they should make an image of this kingdom power 
of the spirit that brings forth the excellence of the kinsman redeeming power. They shall make an image of the beast which was wounded by the sword and does live. Now what was the image made for? So King brought out to us uh, that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, ne Nebuchadnezzar, he set up the gods in the plains of Dura and all the plains. Uh, and said, so when you hear the sound of the sack, about the fruit and all the instruments, uh, you bow down and you worship. It is about one thing, Israel. Is it not about you buying some damn biscuits? Uh, is it not about you going to the market and getting organic? Uh, okay, let's play the scenario out uh, that the nuclear bombs have been spread uh, throughout the earth and the nuclear fallout. What is the ground going to produce? We got to have something greater than a piece of damn biscuit. Oh, I got it in my refrigerator. Oh, the, uh, it's contaminated. Eat it and die. We will eat the Torah of God and we shall live. We will eat the truth. We will eat the bread of, uh, of your shoe. Your shoe says that my, my flesh uh, is meat indeed uh, and my blood is drink indeed. Uh, if you eat and drink this, you shall not die, but you shall live. Uh, your immuna shall not die in the midst uh, of all of this. Uh, and so then he wants us to eat lies today. And we eat the lies instead of truth. We're not going to die. We're not going to die prematurely. Don't let that fly over our heads, all right? We shall live. We shall live. We shall have the higher, the strength, the fortitude, the great perseverance in the midst of all of that. It's not going to be you trying to protect your barn from someone with your AK-47, boom, boom, boom. We're going to lay it down. We're going to lay it down. There will be those, this is how stupid these jackasses are. There will be those that will cry for the rocks and for death to come, and they shall see no death. You understand? So if, if, if you're allowed to die, you just say, Shalom, come in, come in, Yeshua. This is a stupid world. I know I'm ignorant. I'd rather be ignorant than stupid. I just don't know. I've not learned. But this is a stupid world. This is a stupid world. It is stupid. I'm, I'm appalled at the stupidity of this world. And men that say they're men of Yah, I'm appalled. Just like that one that called me last night. This is the same man that has written me many times because I talk about damn faggots, damn faggots. Because he was the damn faggot at one time. And he doesn't like me using the word faggot. So he writes me the last time and said that I must be a pedophile. I love messing with little boys and children. This damn freak. And then he calls us though nonchalant. That's how stupid. And he tells me he's a man of Yah. He's a damn dog. He's a damn effeminate freak. And then he's going to call me without, I mean, no sense of decency to say, Reacha, I've done you wrong. If you ever said that, uh, it is the quiet rock that turns away wrath. A damn faggot like that. That's what he is, a faggot. And I hope the faggot is listening. You know, amazing. He listens because he has nowhere else to go. He has nowhere else to go. There's nothing that cut him like this cuts him. That's why he listens. He'll write me with his smart, ignorant mouth. I said, Yo, at least make sure you do a spell check and your words are spelled right. Don't send me an email with your damn stupidity of your formation of your grammatics. I'm saying that to him, not to you others, all right, but to that beast that has constantly did me like that. Hallelujah. You think I will hear what he says? He's never sent one dime an offering. Well, it's not valuable. No, the word is valuable. Oh, I'm going to send something react and never done a damn thing. And he think he's going to impose on me? You can be weak to say that you've got someone to associate with. He's never been associated with me. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm saying it. And for the rest of these liars out here. Hallelujah. Look at this. It says, it makes fire to come down upon the face of the earth to deceive all of those. Isn't that a deception that Yah is going to de deceive those individuals who walk in the way of iniquity? So you know that Hashatan has seen this great fire, the move of this fire of Yah. It is vital that we understand this. In the process of this teaching, you will understand the vital importance. You must have this fire burning in you. Like Yeremiah said, this word is like fire. It is all shut up in my bone. You're going to have to have the power of the Torah shut up in your bones to overcome these circumstances. That's why we're weak. We fall. We're fragile. We fall at the smallest of circumstances. 
And that's a fact, Israel. Yeah, we're headed for a time that is known as the troubles of Yaakov. These are the Sarah, these are the fiery trials that should fire us. So we should not think it's strange. So we must get in the army and get ourselves spiritually fit. We got to get our shoes on, our feet sharp with the preparation of the message of Shalom, the Bezerach. Let us make sure we have this sheath, our sword in the sheath, the word of Yah. A shield of Imuna. Come on, Yisrael. This is what we need to buy. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. The book of Bimit Barn. How do we think that Yah is going to lead us? He's, does Yah change? He is Yah our Abba and He changed not. Therefore, you sons of Yaakov, we are not consumed. We're the sons of Yisrael. We're the bath. We're not consumed. He changed not. And so the only thing I must do is not, is not uh, uh, this land is somewhat uh, uh, the similitude of Misraim, Egypt. Uh, and we just go back to the Tasnith and see how he led his people. Yah doesn't change. He always leads his people. He has given us examples uh, by the prophets, by the Torah, and by the testimony. So these liars, why would he give that to Ken Lehe, a little effeminate liar, rich, dirty bastard? Why would he give that to him? Why would he give revelation like this to Benny Hinn, a, a, a rich, pompous beast out of hell? Why would he give this to someone like a fat hog like T.D. Japer, a chitlin-eating, pig footcher, ham hog thumping beast of a beast? Cornbread sucking, chitlin growling, Fat back crunching uh, beast and justify some damn pork meat. You know that's not of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It has disdain for the Shabbat. Now he's not giving it to that fat hog. His God is. Hashatan said, Eat all the fat back you want, boy. We're going to kill you. We're going to eat all the fat back and the chitlins. Yeah, so eat the ham hogs. Have your big pig picking. They get together, they have pig picking because they're pigs. No, I want some with a split hoof. I want some cow's meat. I want some lamb's meat. Listen to this carefully here in the book of Bimidbar, Numbers. Yisra'ya in the Midbar. Yah always answers the same. It says in the book of Numbers 11, 1. <laughs> it says, when the people, when they began to complain, they began to, uh, nah, they began to murmur insults against Yah. When you complain, you're actually murmuring insults against Yah. It said it displeased Yah. And we're talking about when they were in the wilderness of Paran. It began to displease Yah. That we caused Yah to be intrigued, and now this house caused them to be uh, displeased. He was not pleased with them because they murmured. They began to anna. And Yah heard it and his anger, his uh, his resentment of them. It's like a child complaining in the midst of all that he, you have done. They began to complain. We cannot have this spirit to complain against Yah in the midst of that midbar. If it's in us now, it will be in us in the midst of great trials and great tribulation. And the anger of Yah was hara, it was kendo. And this is the catalyst. It says, and the ish, and the fire of Yah burned among them. Look at this now. The fire burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. The old saying, the Proverbs, baby, you can run. But you, what you say back there? I saw your lips moving. But you cannot hide. You can run all you want to, but the fire is going to find you. And he found them in the places whereby you would think nobody's hiding there, but the fire of you have found them. I don't care what you try to hide in you, the fire of you is going to find it. And show you how impugnant and how vile it is. And it found them into the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people, they cried unto Moshe. And when Moshe, he had to offer up the right offering. When he, when he prayed to Yah, the fire was quenched. It was ceased. It was not their cries that ceased it. That's what they we had to offer unto Yah. That's why no man is going to be able to buy what the sale. You cannot read. 
redeemed without the buying or, or the selling. You must have the kinsman redeeming power. You must have the ability to offer up. And it's not just meant for everyone. Or oh, they couldn't cry to the elders. They had to cry to Moshe. And he made an offering unto Yah. And the fire was abated. Yah says, my servant, I'm going to stop it. The only cry he's going to hear in that time is the one that sits at his right hand. And that's Yahshua. And he, although Yah knows all things, he will say to him, Yahshua, he said, they can do all things through me. I'm the one that gives strength. I endured it, Abba. They can. She can. He can. I can. We can do all things. That's what he's going to say. I did it. That's what we must overcome. We need the power of that testimony. Let no one kid you, Yisrael. We must have the power of that testimony. Hallelujah. 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 It is says, and he called the name of that place Dab Dab Rah, the burning. He called the name of that place Dab Rah because the fire of Yah burnt among them. And they still lusted and loathed the honeycomb. We cannot lust against Yah in this hour and loathe the precious, sweet fragrance of the sweet bread, Yahshua, that He feeds us. And you find many are turning away from Yahshua, they're rejecting Him, they're rejecting the name, and they're saying it's just Yah and Yah alone. Well, Yahshua is Yah and Yah alone, because that is His word, is this His Dabar, and the flesh was made. And they're saying that the renewed covenant of the Brit Hadassah is a man-made book, and these damn stupid beasts out of hell, you think that they formulated that kind of concept of their own doing? They have heard others that have been persuaded by men that are weaker than them. They have been persuaded about those that are weaker than them. It's amazing how men, uh, they resent strong men, uh, but they like weak men. They like little boys. They want the fellowship of little boys. Uh, and they want to be around little boys. I like strong men. I like strong men. I got a mind thing for strong men. I don't like being around weak men. I want strong men. And yet they will gravitate to those that are weaker than them because they give them a sense of, of their worth. No, I want to be around strong men to show me how little of possession I possess. That's why I like the strong man. That's why I like to embrace the strong I don't want to embrace a damn effeminate faggot man. I like strong men. It takes iron to sharpen iron. You can't sharpen a file with copper. Can you do that, son? Or you can take a copper file out there with those chainsaws though well you get a barrel on them bad boys they get nasty don't they but when they're sharpened right they they cut like butter oh y'all are excellent at sharpening saws but when he sharpened my saw it man i appreciate that you are right? i ain't putting you down now i appreciate oxymi i ain't putting you all down i appreciate me but when i file it it's worse than all of you all or he gets it for me well, she just she like butter. It's like an artwork. I like that, right? I, I, just, I put that bed with. Ah, I like that. You sharpen my saw before you leave. I, I'm not. No, no. Don't rise up against me. I'm not discounting. I appreciate what you did the last time. I really do. I do. But I can tell the difference when I hit a piece of wood. No. No. I'll use it for now. Zarkane, uh, make sure you get that for me. And just, it's sitting out there sharpening my saw. So when I hit it, it's just... Ooh, sweet. Like that. I'll tell you what, you get out there and try cutting some of that wood, and the saw is done. you hope. Maybe we need to get them all out there. Put some chaps on them and let them experience that. See what it's like. All right. How about that? Can I move on with a little closure here? I'm going to close it because that's much more. I got 27 more pages to go. All of that. Boy, that's a lot. And you all know how I talk now, okay? Hallelujah, because I want to explain everything to you. So he presents himself in this characteristic 
that he is a fire, that he has nothing to be played with. And so the enemy must emulate that. As he calls fire, he's not calling no nuclear bombs. When the whole system is dismantled, how do you get a nuclear bomb up? You, you know even the concept, think about that. When you have a system that is chaotically dismantled, how do you even get everyone in? It would take you five, six, seven years to get a, a chip in everybody's head. It is so stupid. Don't you even see the, the, the fictitiousness of that? It doesn't even calculate even the, in, 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 in a surreal world. Or one that is, what is the word that is, they use for when something is not uh, real? Uh, 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 it's a comical type thing. I'll think of it. Well, even in a surreal world, uh, you, you know, how, how can that, you can't even equate that. How do you get all nations shall be brought under this? You understand? How do you get someone in the boonies uh, uh, of Australia? How do you get the aborigines and, and those that don't even have a socialization with any kind of contact of people? How do they get a mark? How do they get the beast? These are stupid individuals. Or have them writing me, oh, it's the seventh saw, six star of David on the flag of you. You jackasses, don't write me. It's stupid. These young boys that think they've heard somebody say something, they're repeating and they're regressing. They're puking up what they've heard. This come by the fiber and the text of the testimony of Yeshua. And you got the old head said the same thing these dumb jackasses are saying. That's why I can't listen to them. I will listen to the ark here. You get nurtured here and those you out there. That's all right. Hallelujah. Can I move on? Is this the character of Yah? Debarim, quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. It's the reason that I'm teaching on this fire. And Zachin Yaramiyah, when he teaches on this Wednesday, he will bring this. He's still going in that direction. I hope he reintroduced that to you in some in, in, in his teaching on, on, on Khatve Imat on Wednesday. They have no independence. This country is not free. Only when your shoe makes you free, you're free. As a free y'all. As a free. As a free man. As a free day. As a free man. Hallelujah. Be midbar quickly. I mean, uh, Debarim 424. For Yah, your Abba, he is a consuming fire. Is that Yah? And he shall cause fire to come down from the heavens uh, to deceive those by the means of those miracles. This is the pronounced characteristic of Yah. When he pronounced himself unto Moshe, when he pronounced himself, it was by fire. When he made himself known unto Yisrael, Yah, it was the fire that led them uh, in the middle of the pillow of that fire at night uh, and the cloud of his comfort uh, that they can walk under the comfort of his Torah. He was bringing them to a place to give them a law like no other land. And the tribulation is going to take us to a place uh, that there's no land that shall have the law that we shall have. Uh, no land that shall have the more dim uh, and the celebration we shall have. Uh, we're going to die in the physical sense. Uh, he never made us to die. He made us to live. That's why he said, get him out. Get him out because if he eat, he will live. Get him out. And so he's going to allow us to eat from that tree. He's got to get this damn mess out of us first. Get it out of me, y'all. Get it all out of us. Get it out of me, yeah. I want it out of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is an Abba. He is a consuming fire. Even he is a Kena. He is jealous. And that reflects only Yah that. It is only the attribute, this jealousy. And so when we try to equate Yah with Allah's silly jealousy, yeah. It doesn't, you don't even, you couldn't even define it. Uh, if he told you what his jealousy means, you couldn't define it. Uh, there are things that are too high for us. Uh, well, I don't believe that. Then explain unto me the aerodynamics, uh, the aeronautical power of the engineering construct of an airplane. Uh, do that, Mr. Smarty. Well, I'm an aeronautical engineer. I can explain that. Oh, you can. Uh, then explain to me the creation of Yah. How about that? Well, that is somewhat suspect. It is a theological question that uh, has been through the annals of, annals of time has been discussed. I don't give a damn what has been discussed. Since you're that bright, explain that. You simply show Jackass how dumb he is by showing him what little he knows or she. And that's what I do. Hallelujah. He is a consuming fire. He's a jealous Abba. He is jealous. His presence emanates fire. And that's what Shatan must 
emulate the false prophets. This beast government must emulate that kind of spirit before the coming of this man of sin, this wicked one of sin. Because David, when he saw Yah, he saw him this way, the honor of Yah. Tehillim, Psalm 53. Psalm 53, is Yahshua coming? Yeah. Sure he's coming. This is what Daiwi said. He said, Yah, Tehillim, Psalm 53. Yah, our Abba, shall. I like that affirmation. I like the confirmation. I like this constitution. He says in Tehillim 53, Ya our Abba shall bow, he shall come, he shall enter in. Not only into our hearts, we shall enter into the earth. Come into my heart, Yah. How is that song we sing it? Come in and make my heart your home. Come and make my love. You all sing that, but revive it with a little more enthusiastic. enthusiasm. Sing it with a greater fervor. Come and make my heart your home. Come on, just bring some life to it. I don't like the way I heard the last time we sang that. Get some life to it, all right? Yahweh Arabah shall come and shall not keep silence. He shall not keep harash. He shall not speak as one that is dumb and has no speech. He shall come as, he said, a fire shall devour before him and shall be very tempious. Do you hear that? When he comes a fire, Psalms 50 verse 3, a fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempious. It shall be a fire that is full of uh, za'ah. It shall be horrible and terrifying. This is Yah now. Can you imagine at, at this season, that time when people see the great uh, Simeon's, the fire, not nuclear bomb, but fire literally falling from the heaven. Isn't it amazing how we discount Yah what he says? And so we got to explain and make resolutions for Yah, or it's going to be nuclear bombs. Yah didn't say anything about no damn nuclear bomb. I don't get a, give a damn about what, what's his name of this, supposed to be this, what's his name? I know his name. This genius that saw the airplanes and all of that, all of these things. What? Yeah, Astrodamus. Astrodamus, that freak. Damn Astrodamus. Before Astrodamus was, Yah was and he is. So damn Astrodamus. But yet people will believe what Astrodamus said, but they won't believe what Yah says. Uh, he calls fire his words. Uh, when he speaks, he says, this wicked and the fire of that just, it's very tempious. And that's what the enemies of darkness must try to emulate. They must try to emulate the very same scenario. And because the minds of the people will be so crooked, uh, they have not bought the truth. Uh, they have not took pleasure in the Torah. They will buy the lies. Uh, Come on, Yisrael. It doesn't take much for a magician to deceive the eyes with perception of people. It is not the supernatural fire of Yah. It says that Yah is a consuming fire. That fire ain't going to consume. That fire devoured before him and after him, it is much more devouring after him. It is tempious. It is sarah. You understand? I like this. Simple to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Far before him, and it is very tempious. And round about Yah, round about Yah, and round about him. There's a fire that is all around our Abba. We get the witness of this true power. We shall burn like a fervent fire. The words shall burn in us. We're going to need that fire. It is one thing that uh, it, it expends or removes the dross, the wickedness from the bosom uh, of Yisrael. Hallelujah. I want to read a few more verses here. I, want, I must conclude. I have four or five places to read from, but I must do this because I want to go into a greater depth. Next week, I want to go into the Great Tribulation, what that implies, and how no man would be able to buy or to sell unless they have the mark of the beast. What is this all about? But quickly here in the book of Yeshua, Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 27. We have no reason to fear the fire of Yah, the word of Yah, the Torah of Yah. Because this tells me the prophet here in Yeshaya Isaiah 30 27. It says, look or behold, the name of Yah comes from far. It tells us that his name, his countenance is present. It is one that is is burning with his Anger with his alpha. 
And the burden of it is kubet. It is heavy. It is very taxing. The burden of the anger of Yah. It says that his lips are full of za'am, of indignation. The fire of his terror and his tongue. The tongue of Yah is as a what? Say it aloud. Say it loud. It is like a yachal. A devouring fire, his lotion. That's Yah. That's the Abba that created all things. That's the mighty one. Not the freaks of the God kingdom. His tongue, the tongue, the lotion of Yah is as a devouring fire. For who? For his enemies. That's who it's for. We're not enemies of Yah. We're not the Oyeb of Yah. How do I know it's for his enemies? In the same writing of this prophet, in chapter 66, verse 15, Yeshaya 66, verse 15, it says, For behold, Yah will come with fire. Is that not how the false pseudo prophet would introduce the power of this beast kingdom with fire? The one that they should build an image to? That you may offer up offerings. It's all about worship. Isaiah 66 verse 15. For behold, Yah comes with fire. And with his chariots like whirlwind. For what? To render his off, his anger. And his fury, his chema, his venomous rage and poison of, uh, of death. Uh, and his rebuke with flames of fire. That's what he's coming to do. Verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will Yah plead with some flesh. He's pleading with us. Tribulation he shall plead with all flesh. He's coming to plead. By the fire and the sword he shall plead with all flesh. We don't want the fire of his word. We're too easily offended because we have been raised to be little soft, effeminate men and women that without the femininity of a woman, she wants to be a boy. He will plead with all flesh. And he said, and the slain of Yah shall be rabbi. It shall be numerous. It shall be great. And there shall be many. What we need as a nation is the true word. And there's only one dimension that the true Torah of Yah operates. And if there's a prophet that can give us true expression of that, his name is Yeremiah and the writings of Jeremiah. In the writings of Jeremiah, and I want to read what his counterpart says, but I want to close with these two writings. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. Come on and say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the true word of Yah, Yisrael. That's why the enemy is going to try to emulate. Yeremiah 23, verse 29, Yah says, Is not my word, my daba, like as a fire? Is that how it is pronounced in your writing? Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Does it say it that way? Yeah. Is the writing of that parative? Yah says, is not my word like a fire? Says Yeremiah or says Yah? Says Yeremiah or says Yah? Yah says, my word is like a fire. I'm telling you that. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And Yah says, therefore, behold, I am against the prophets. There shall be a pseudo one that rise up. He says, I'm against those that say Yahweh. They say that Yah has uttered it. You're going to be raptured. They're liars. They say that Yah says it all right. He poked your liar. They say Yah says it's right to keep Sunday the whole day. They're liars. That says 
That Yah, Yah says that they steal. Thou shalt not steal. They steal my word, uh, everyone from his neighbor. I have put my Torah in the heart of Yisrael. Yeah, this is the Brit Hadassah I make with Yisrael. Yeah, I will put, I will know fan, I will write, I will hata my Torah in the inward parts, in the mind, in the Ruach. And these damn dogs that's beasts out of hell uh, shall steal that word. It's not Hashatan, a liar. Is he not a thief? Yeah. He was a thief. He was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, does he not come to rob, steal, and to kill? Uh, and that's what these missionaries of hell, they do. They steal the Torah from their neighbor. These are soft, weak men. They don't, they don't want to be examples of what the Torah is. And they steal. Well, it's all right for them. No, it's not all right. You don't make excuses for anything outside. Everything must be adjudicated according to the Torah. And because they don't know a damn thing, they speak out of their own wickedness of unlearnability. I close here. I'm tired now. Let, can I read this? I want to close here because I want to begin next week. As Baruch, this man, he is the scribe of Yeremiah. And everything that he says, he writes it. And can you imagine how this word internally is dealing in this man's heart? He said, man, they, they didn't say it like this Ooh. And the power of the Ruach move upon this man and he utters out of the book of Baruch. Hear this, Yisraya. Baruch, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. He says, This is the book of the commandments of Yah, the Savva. This is the book of the Mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. He said, And the Torah that endures forever, the Torah of Yeshua. It endures forever. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be your shach, shall be saved. This is the Torah that endures ulam viad. And they that keep it shall come to life. You can't come to the high yell of Yah unless you shema God the Torah. He said, but such at least it shall die. They shall die. And he gives us, in verse 35 of the same chapter, which shall be the end of that city, of those in that religious posturing, what shall be. He gives us an account when we lead the Torah of Yah. He says uh, in verse 35 of first Baruch, for fire shall come upon her, the city of his name, and that's Yerushalayim from the everlasting Yah. Long to endure. And she shall be inhabited. Who is she? Yerushalayim. She shall be inhabited by devils for a great time. Now that doesn't mean a damn thing unless I find some closure to that. And I will read out of the mouth of Yakahan. He says she shall be inhabited by devils. Shadem. For a long time, for a great time. Did it not? Baruch says that. And this is what Yakahan says in Revelation 11, 8. He talks about the two messengers that shall rise up by the command. They have the word of Yah that fire proceeds out of their mouth. This is how Yah introduced himself. It says in Revelation 11, 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the, lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually, what is that great city? Yerushalayim. He says spiritually, it is called Sidam, Sorum Gomorrah, and Mitzrayim, where also our master Yeshua HaMashiach was impaled. For that city shall be inhabited by demons, shot them devils for a great time. So it is the day, the Fagites, that those they call themselves Jews, that are false illuminators of a false religious practice uh, that are there today uh, and all of those that call themselves Hebrews uh, and they are wicked men that have no light of Yah, they have no power of the testimony of Yahshua. It is a damn city where the faggots rain, range rampantly, the gay proud, the fag proud, the bull dagger proud, the tra transgender, what in the hell is a transgender? 
It runs rapidly there, Yisrael. It is a, spirit, a city spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt to this day. And Yah says the demons shall dwell there for a great time until we as the warriors, the valiant warriors of Yah, we're going to clean the city. We're going to rid that city whereby his name shall be prominent. His throne shall be there. And we shall dwell there in the city of Yah. And we shall rule. He made us to rule. He did not make us to be subjugated unto the powers of hell. But because of sin, we have been bought by the praise of the dam of Yahshua. We have a kinsman, redeemer, and I'm not looking for another one. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all, Yisrael. I am tired. I'm wore out. I'm hungry as Jean Valjean would say. So if you are rock you all Yisrael, you that have joined us. May the riches of your rest upon you all in Yeshua's name. I want to say again, we're going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio, the first week, the fourth of August. We're going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio. I want you all in the Ohio, Cincinnati area to come. I want, we're just going to have one service. I'm going to drive up. I know I'm going to be walked out. So we're going to have just one service on that Shabbat, a time of fellowship. We're going to preach. We're going to holler. We're going to yell. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to do what God guides us. We're going to have a meeting there in Cincinnati, Ohio. We'll have all details up by tomorrow. All right. He will be working on that. We want to meet you all there in the area of Cincinnati. Our friend, Achmikaya. And Mikaya, a lot they have sent enough offerings 10 times over to come. I'm never going to visit them never going to that part of Ohio, so we're going to be in Cincinnati. We greet you all of our friends, our enemies too. We love you, we do. We love our enemies, and we appreciate you because you make us strong. Hallelujah. Because there's no gain saying you can resist anything we say here. Hallelujah. You can't resist anything. So we appreciate all that you do, all of your critiquing. We appreciate that. Can I tell you this? I'm not going to lie to you. I saw a little clip, and I must say this. <clears throat> I saw a clip concerning what they call the big three in Miami. I want to close with this. I know it has not, but I want to show you the value and the importance of what Evangel Hartsfield told me, open rebuke of and secret love. And they have this point guard. His name is Mario Talmer. And I saw this clip, and I lied to you not. LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade, they treat that boy like he's not even a human. And the thing about it, they all say he is strong. He doesn't fight. He, I mean, you could see them. They, up at the, they, they grab, come here, come here, Abner. Come here right quick, son. They up on that board. They up on that board. He just looking at them. They, 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 he didn't fight them. They're like, come on, man. Come on. Come on. That's what I'm telling you. And he just, he just looks at I'm not lying. He just looks at them and, okay. He didn't fight them one bit. The way I say, man, look at this. This is beautiful. I wanted to copy that and let you all see the way they treated that boy. They treated that boy like he was a piece. But they say he's got a heart of steel. And they even mock him. See, he got tattooed on his shoulder, Mr. Clutch. <laughs> I tell you what, they needed him to be Mr. Clutch. But I watched the way they treated him, and yet I never saw in all of those clips, you didn't see him like, And we are people that are missing just anything that we get mad as a damn hellhound. You know what he said? He said, they, they've been there. They know. They just make me better. Yeah. Hallelujah. So his market value went up 10,000%. We don't want that. We don't want our market value to go up before y'all. What a shame. We don't want nobody to tell. We think highly of ourselves and we esteem no one. Ah, like that freak last night. I'm a man of Yah. He's a faggot of God. He's not a messenger of Yah. His voice doesn't even sound as though there's any character of a man there. Try to rebuke me. I won't let a freak like that rebuke me. Yeah, I say that openly. I rebuke him before all. Irvin, don't write me. Don't call me. Because every time he always got to... You shouldn't use that word. You shouldn't say that about people like that. Yah hates the faggots. He's going to kill all of them. That's why he's spreading AIDS and diseases. They have no pleasure. Because he was a faggot. I would have never said that. No one would have never known. He wants to defend. He got some faggotism still in him. That's why he defends faggots. 
Hallelujah. Now take that. He's listening, I guarantee you. May the riches of your rest upon you. I appreciate all your sin and offering. You that have listened today, now this has been a nice, not a nice, this has been a wholesome cake here. This has been manna. You say, what is this? That's what this has been. That's what they say with the manna. What is this? So send an offering. Some of you sit there like hogs. You want to send a nickel. And you eat like a hog. And you eat all week. And look at your wickedness. Yeah, I said to you. But yet you give every damn offering to Walmart and Dollar Mart. You make sure that you keep the landlord happy. The extortion of Yah's truth. Hallelujah. We're not begging. We're all right. He's going to take care of us. Long as I can keep us warm during the winter, that's all that matters. We get the greenhouse fixed for the fall. We can grow lettuce. We can grow, ah, we're going to eat. We got cows. We got sheep. We get the electric bill paid. Isn't that all right? Let us stand to our feet. I'm out. Hallelujah. As we turn toward the city, the city of his name, not the city where the spirit of, of of Sodom and Egypt is. In all things, our Rabbi, we do barak you for all things in your shoes, my dear name. We appreciate all of your kindness, your mercies this Shabbat. We told you for all things, your truth that is so simple, that it shows us, especially me, how dumb and how ignorant we really are. Bless your people mightily and strengthen them. <clears throat> Give us wisdom. Heal the bodies of those that need healing. Take safely down the highway those that have joined us here and those that are listening by the live stream or the visual stream. We do barak you for all things. And the blessed assurance of the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, feed us as that we said until we want no more. We want your truth. Raise up your messengers, your mighty young men of strength and zeal and zest. Yeah. Mighty men, cause their hearts to proclaim with great power, conviction, your Torah in Yeshua's name. These are the things we ask for. You have given us much this Shabbat, and we shall rest in Yeshua's mighty name. In all things, we give your name the highest of praise and honor to the very power of the knowledge of Yeshua's mighty name. And with all of our voice, we cry, Hallelujah! 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 Amen. Yabarak. Hallelujah.